Hello, and welcome back to another Coffee Talk podcast episode. Bubbly came out with a new flavor, green apple. So I mixed that with this fresh pressed juice I got from the grocery store. Popped some ice in there because I wanted a refreshing drink to sit and chat with you guys today. So let me know down below if you have a beverage or a snack or whatever it is that you're doing, tell me. Noticed a lot of requests coming in from members and also just subscribers to do more Cosmic Brew content. And if you don't know what Cosmic Brews are, it was a line of content back in the day or a line of coffee talks back in the day where Cosmic Brews were all about spirituality and intuition and just really getting to deeply know yourself on a more vibrational sense. You know, we would talk about things like the law of attraction and non-attachment and going through spiritual awakening awakenings and such and I feel like today's is going to be a good conversation for those of you guys that have been making those requests but it's also a great conversation for anybody that's been really struggling to trust themselves because whether you count yourself as a spiritual person or not sometimes it can just be a different word or a different definition for something that we all experience which is our inner selves we have this inner sense of guidance this inner sense of consciousness and that's not something that's necessarily spiritual it's just human you have your conscious brain you have your thoughts you have just who you are as a personal being that is so unique we all experience feelings of positivity of attraction towards certain things and negativity and what's the opposite of attraction? I guess like rep repulsion, but that sounds a little dramatic, but basically things that we aren't attracted to and instead we move away from. Now that can be seen as instinctual and a lot of it is, but it can also be seen as intuitive and there's many layers to that. Today I just wanna talk about how to actually trust that inner guidance, whether you think it is divine or you think it's just merely human. So let's talk about this misconception that intuition is always supposed to be comforting. Well, this isn't intuitive. This can't be my intuition telling me this because it doesn't feel good or it's bringing up a lot of fears or it's making me uncomfortable and thus it must not be right for me or and thus I am going to say no to this and instead stay over here and do what's comfortable and only chase after positive experiences or positive feelings. This is one of the easiest traps to fall into as a human being. It doesn't matter again, spiritual or not, intuitive or not, doesn't matter where you think your impulses towards things come from, we all do this. We seek out comfort whether we realize we're doing it consciously or not. So even your worst habits, even your bad habits are really just a very intelligent way of your brain trying to keep you comfortable. The things that are meant for you, they're not gonna feel like this coddling, comforting energy that's only communicating with you through positive and uplifting and comforting experiences. And this is a really common misconception to make. It's one that we've all probably made a time or two. I know I definitely have. And thus we tend to shy away from the things that make us uncomfortable or shy away from the things that challenge us or bring up deep seated fears or even surface level fears because we're like, hey, don't wanna deal with that today. So that must not be part of my intuitive path and I'm gonna go this way. Do you assume or do you believe or make the connection that it's always gotta feel good? It's always gonna feel comfortable. You're never gonna have any negative experiences around it or challenging experiences around it and you're supposed to just flow. The thing is, Following your intuition is not always pleasurable. In fact, it can be, but a lot of the times it actually isn't. And the reason why is pretty simple, at least in my belief. The idea that we all came to earth with a purpose is something that I do truly believe in. And I'm so open and would love to hear if you believe something different. But when people ask like, how do you figure out your soul's path? How do you know your soul's purpose? How am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to do on this earth? It's so difficult to answer that question because one, I can't answer that through a screen without knowing you. And two, I can only give you my intuitive sense about what I would get from you. But three, the ultimate answer is pretty much the same for all of us. We all incarnated on this planet to evolve, but that evolution is gonna be different for each and every one of us. So that's what I mean when it's like getting down to the nitty gritty or the details about your evolution or about what is right for you. I mean, you can ask people, you can get really intuitive people. You know yourself better than absolutely anybody. So you can ask all of the mystics, all of the psychics, all of the intuitive creatures, all of the people that love you and know you, but the best answer you're gonna get is from yourself. 
The trouble is if you're always waiting for your intuition to communicate with you in only positive and exciting and inspiring things, and instead ignoring all of the times fears pop up, all of the time challenges pop up, or all of the time something that is so meant for you but scares the living crap out of you pops up so you just put it off to the side and think, no, that can't be right for me, then you're never gonna be able to go on that journey. Let me take that back. It's not that you're never gonna be able to go on that journey. You likely still will because I think the universe works in mysterious ways and sometimes we get kicked in the butt and put or redirected onto paths that we're meant to take no matter how hard we tried to veer away from that path because it is so meant for you. It's so meant for your evolution. But all in all, our souls come here to evolve and what that evolution looks like is what is so uniquely different. And the purpose of your intuition is not to protect you. It's not to keep you safe. That's your instincts. The difference between intuition and instincts and the beautiful, romantic, poetic life symmetry that everything can kind of have that duality to it, but there's always the little mix of in between, that infinity symbol where I don't believe that the world is so binary or is so dual or is so yin and yang and all of that. I think it really is kind of, that, like if you think of the yin and yang symbol, there's a little bit of one and the other always. But the beautiful part about instinct and intuition is it is your instinct that is meant to keep you safe. It is your instinct that is meant to self-protect. And our brains are wired through that instinct to do the things that keep us comfortable, do the things that keep us safe. And we live during a time that is so highly associated with above shoulder living. How many people do you know that live life below the shoulders? We are all living on our phones. Our phones are not a physical body experience. Our phones are all communications of the brain. They are so captivating intellectually and whether or not you actually use technology to evolve intellectually or not doesn't matter. We can use it to socialize. We can use it for inspiration or whatever, but you're using your brain. When you're on your phone, you don't need much else going on than a little bit of brain activity. And it is so addicting, right? But even when you take technology out of it, a lot of us are living, or a lot of us tend to live above the shoulders because this is safe living. This is also instinctual living. You get a feeling, you get a thought process. The brain works so quickly that if you're walking across the street and a car is coming at you, you jump. We tend to only really connect with like thoughts and facts. We don't like to always get down into the vulnerabilities of things like our opinions, our beliefs, or the things within our hearts, our soul purposes that come from the gut, the things that we love to create, the things that make us feel at home, that make us feel like we belong. Those things we usually keep for either just ourselves or people that we're really, really close to. Intuition is below the shoulders. Intuition doesn't come from the mind. And this is the trickiest thing because at least I felt like in my own spiritual path and my own spiritual journey, this is where I have been the most challenged, especially when it came to any tool I was using, any journaling cards, uh, psychics, no matter what it was, it was as soon as I let my brain tap into what I was trying to hear or understand about the world, about myself, about the messages that I was downloading, that is when I would find a sense of resistance. That is when I would find some difficulty. You can't necessarily logically think your way through intuition. Your mind, your brain, your instincts are the things that want to keep you safe and self-protect. And it's also makes sense. That's the thing that wants to make you logical, that makes you think, I can only believe what I see with my eyes, that wants to know facts and information and knowledge. And yes, in the right time and place, those things are very powerful. But when we're talking about our soul's path and our soul's journey, when we're talking about something much more intrinsic, much more profound, deep, I mean, that's, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying not to like make it seem like one should be prioritized over the other. They're both important with their time and place. But when we are talking about intuition, when we are talking about these important souls, paths, journeys, evolution, a lot of the time it's actually the, quite the opposite of feeling protected and safe. If your soul purpose is evolution, then your intuition is the divine guidance that pushes you along that evolution. And evolution doesn't come in our comfort zone. 
evolution doesn't come from being able to see and predict things exactly as they are. Evolution comes from leaving the comfort zone, facing your fears, being challenged and overcoming those challenges. And sometimes it comes from a little bit of tough love that our intuition is usually there to give us but we don't think it's our intuition. We don't wanna take it. We're like, no, this doesn't feel good. You might notice that you may actually be guided towards, if not, life actually forces you towards the things you fear the most. You might have put yourself or tried to put yourself in a situation that made you avoid one of your deepest seated fears and then it ended up happening anyways. And you think like, I did everything I possibly could. This is the brain logically trying to make sense, thinking like I did everything I possibly could to self-protect and, and stay safe. Yet, I still ended up manifesting, or we assume we manifested, this deep fear. Meanwhile, I mean, again, it's really down to what you believe in, but you could have agreed to that manifestation before you even incarnated, or, if you don't believe in that type of thing, you could have called that fear towards you by trying so hard and desperately to avoid it. But the thing is, is that what you actually want might be on the other side of facing that fear. What you need to learn, what you need in this time that your soul is existing on this planet to learn in order to evolve might come from overcoming that challenge. Times when we don't trust our intuition comes from when we're living under illusions. When we're living under illusions of comfort, of safety, of gratification, again, it's getting murkier and murkier the more and more that we continue to live above the shoulders, continue to integrate our existence and what we've come to know ourselves through with technology, with phones, it's getting more and more complicated and we become more and more untrusting of our intuition because we're not practicing using it. We're not practicing it following it as much. And when we live under these illusions of comfort, of distraction, which I mean, your phone can also be a great freaking distraction from the uncomfortable, it makes following our intuition feel painful. It makes following our intuition seem terrifying. And we might not even know that it's actually our intuition calling us. So a good example of this, or just to give you a, something you can tangibly hold on to with what we're talking about here. If you're having a persistent fear that keeps popping up into your brain and you're like, I don't understand why I keep freaking out about this. I don't, know what, I don't understand why I'm so scared of this thing. It's not happening in my life. That actually might be your intuition trying to send you a message. We are getting messages all of the time and the more sensitive you get with those messages, the more sensitive you are to try the best you can. It's really difficult, but try the best you can, <laughs> like as far as you can go with not attaching to judgment on what you're hearing or receiving or experiencing. There's so much profound knowledge that's much different than logical or more intellectual knowledge. It's intuitive knowledge about what is right for you or what is calling towards you. And it gets so easy to tune it out and ignore it and seek out comfort and seek out distractions because a lot of the times, or at least a good chunk of the times, those messages come and we hear them and we think, wow, if I were to actually follow that message, I would have to get deeply uncomfortable. I would have to put myself out there. I would have to change course in my life entirely. I would have to let people down. I would have to be the person I'm really internally destined to be, but I'm so afraid to be because of what other people think of me. As always in any chat we have, in any content you watch, mine or otherwise, you just take what resonates and you leave behind what doesn't. Because again, we're all here for different reasons. We're all here to evolve in different ways. And so some information is meant for you, some information isn't, but it doesn't make each of our information or the things that we experience wrong individually. But it's my understanding, or at least it's my belief that the more and more we tune out our intuition, the more we shut the intuition out, the more we shut them down, the more we stop listening, the more we tune them out, the more we say no, the more we run away, the more spiritually unhealthy we are. Your energy becomes unhealthy and it materializes itself in other ways in the body when we aren't listening to our soul's purpose, our soul's path. Two different things can happen. Actually, multiple different things can probably happen, but two that are coming to my brain right now. One is we start to manifest it in physical pains, in physical illnesses or ailments in the body. 
Two is the outside world or the universe does things to freaking shake us up and put us back towards that path or keep directing us, divinely guiding us back towards that path because we are trying so hard to avoid it. We might retreat even further or regress back to bad habits or more distractions or more comfort in order to keep ourselves safe because it seems so painful when really if we could find the courage to get to the other side or to really befriend our intuition and the things that it challenges us with, we'll actually find ourselves way stronger on the other side. And I guess that's a good place to leave this chat today is what actually ends up happening when you follow your intuition. A lot of the times it's a greater sense of confidence. You have more self-esteem further along on your soul evolution, your soul's path, your soul's journey. You align with things that are meant for you. So more things flow easily into your life. You're able to know what's yours and know what isn't. And see things and understand like that's meant for me and and it happens a little bit more seamlessly it still does require work <laughs> but i mean it's able to attract easier to you you're able to still challenge yourself overcome have fun with life you know really open yourself up to the messages that you hear the things that you sense the things that you feel you're able to also not attach to your fears like it again is so hard because we are only human and we're meant to be human. I don't think that it's also the most righteous path to think that we're here to try and be these incredible spiritual beings. I mean, there's definitely some people that have. But realistically, for the most of us, we're meant to just live as human beings with an openness to both our instincts and our intuitions. The more that you really do open up to it, the more you can understand, oh, my fear isn't something to actually be scared of. It's just really good information. It's not something that's so personal. It's not something that's so destined to follow me. It's something that one, I can either rise to the challenge and overcome, become curious about, or just understand that this is a common fear of most people. For instance, death being one of them. If you can actually, there is an actual state where you can detach from the fear of death. But the thing is, is it's a common experience that we all do fear death. We all fear the absolute unknown. It's such an overwhelming, terrifying fear that we make it more personal, that we, we so deeply subconsciously do things to avoid anything that feels even remotely close to death. For instance, like completely changing course in your life or like completely changing who you are to really align with yourself because it is the death of who you were before, even if not physically, but in a more essence state, essential, essen essential. I think I've been talking too long. It's the essence of who you were before. It's a death to that person when you really start being who you're meant to be. Uh, which again, it sounds silly, but our subconscious, that feels like death. So we, we run away from it. That's terrifying. But if you can detach from the fear of death, if you can think like, well, this will be another great adventure, be it physically or be it more spiritually, be it more uh, in terms of your essence and who you are and your personality and being able to show up in the world as yourself, who you were before does not just die and go away. They become a foundational part of who you are now. The more we learn to trust our intuition, the more we learn to trust the things that do challenge us, that do arise fear within us, that make us uncomfortable and know that that's not a bad thing. That's not a invitation to run the opposite way. The more we start to experience things like liberation, like confidence, like true empowerment. And from that state of empowerment, we're able to make greater change, greater evolution. And even if to top it off, you don't necessarily believe that your soul's path or your soul's mission here is to evolve then just note that when you do still follow your intuition and you do evolve in that state, maybe you're, you believe your purpose here is something totally different. The more we evolve individually, which is the thing we have the most control over, the more our vibration, our energy, our light rises. Again, there's so many different definitions for it, but just all, it could just be your, your happiness rises. And that has a rippling effect on the people around you. It has a rippling effect on the world. When you evolve, or if you want to think of it as your vibration going up, or if you want to think of it as just being in a lighter, brighter state of energy, of mood, when you go out and you interact with the world, you spread that energy. And when you think about the rippling effect of how many people that can ping off of and then ripple out more and ripple out more, that does ultimately change the world. And there's a lot out there that we don't have control over, a lot of big things that can feel really fearful and overwhelming that again are common things that we all experience, but when we place our focus and 
our attention on the things that we have more control over, which include our own soul's path and evolution. It is not selfish for you to evolve. It is not selfish for you to do what you were destined to do, what you came to this earth to do, to receive what is meant for you, to work for and overcome and be, I don't wanna use the word better because that makes it seem like who you are now is not good enough, but evolve. It's just the best word for it is to truly evolve. That is not selfish. That's honoring yourself. It's stepping into your true power, which has a very positive effect on the rest of the world, or at least one of the biggest positive effects you yourself can have on the rest of the world. So there you have it. <laughs> That's why you should trust your intuition and you should know that your intuition is not going to sit there and coddle you, like cheering you up and saying, don't worry about it, get comfortable, just lay back, the life will come to you. Your higher self knows who you are. Most times it actually requires a great deal of discomfort and a great deal of facing our fears, which can be not so fun, but I hope that you're able to take this Take a step back, maybe do some journaling or just sit with this and think like, where have I been running away from areas of my life? What fears have I not been facing or that I've been perhaps controlling some of my behavior lately? And could that be a very intelligent way that my intuition is calling me towards something? And what might lay on the other side of that? So let me know what you thought about the chat down below, if this sparked any thoughts, ideas, experiences within you that you feel like you would like to share with myself or the community, leave it in the comment section down below if you're over on YouTube. And if not, then hop on over to YouTube. And outside of that, I'm sending you love all the way to the moon and back. And I will talk to all of you in our next Coffee Talk chat. Bye guys.